Assalamu alaikum beautiful people Welcome to another vlog Right We come outside Manchester City Stadium We have a tour of the 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 city stadium The boys are down as well How's it going? Good, good Where are we? Actually at the stadium at the Hat Stadium. Yeah. I thought we were at City Stadium. The same thing. Oh, is it? Yeah. All right. I thought it's uh, two different things, you know. <laughs> so, how are you doing? Which one are you going to? At the Hat or City? It's the same thing, isn't it? Oh, same thing, isn't it? I was going to say Liverpool, sorry. I'm here in Paris. What's this behind us? One of it. I think it's the Academy Stadium. Academy Stadium? Yeah. So, where are we going? Are we going in there or? Go read that. That's so cool. We are here. Actually, there's three different ones. You can go to this one. Actually, there's three. Can you tell me in the mood? Is that going to be up there somewhere, isn't it? <laughs> so look, there you go. Let's walk up there. So you guys, with that one.
fantastic football. We played about 500 games. This is a bonus opportunity seeing the away messenger. What do you think of it? Plain. Plain, yeah, yeah, that's a good word, yeah. Any others? Bland is a good word. Phillips together, 
and we've got Phil Foden and Scott Carson together here as well. But that's by coincidence. For example, when we signed Ruben Diaz, that was the only space available, so we had to take that. Okay. But the principle is that they don't speak in their own language. So when Ruben and Bernardo are speaking together, they don't speak in Portuguese, they speak in English on an English lesson. And if you think about it, you like the illuminated walkway, isn't it? <laughs> Go, you did it on a go, John. What do you think of it, boys? Oh, very good. Need How was it? Need to. Stadium. I know it's just starting to rain, so it might just keep it a little bit briefer than normal. But the big thing here is that this stadium was built for Commonwealth Games in 2002. Okay, so this is the what we call the press conference, if you like. Fantastic. Great answers. What do you think, Pat? Thank you for your answer. And uh, that is impossible. <laughs> Pat, you've been amazing for Manchester City over the six years you've been here. Would you say that you feel at home here in Manchester? Definitely. Manchester, uh, I'm pretty sure, will be part of the rest of my life. I, I feel absolutely Mancunian. And not only myself, my family included. So uh, it's perfect. I, I feel beloved. <laughs> Thank you. It's been a pleasure, so now it's time we take some pictures. Wow. That's amazing, isn't it?
raining whilst we've been in there. So the match is over now. We won on the way home now. We're gonna have a scrum on the way home now. Move from one area to the other area. Check it out. Match day. Ten minutes to kick off the Etihad Stadium, home of the citizens of Global Club. But of course it wasn't always like this. At Manchester City we never forget our humble beginning and we remember the work, commitment and belief that has brought us to where we are today. At the end of the 19th century, Manchester was the industrial heartland of the United Kingdom. The parishioners of St. Mark's Church, inspired by the work of the Connell family, believed that forming a football club would do something to alleviate conditions within their local community. As the team developed, success on the pitch quickly followed, and in 1887, under the name of Ardwick AFC, the club turned professional, moving to their first permanent home, Hyde Road. Seven years later, in 1894, led by Joshua Palby, the members of Ardwick AFC came together to establish a new club. This was to be a club for the people of Manchester. After 10 years, the team won their first trophy, the 1904 FA Cup, and returned home to a parade through the city, the likes of which had never been seen before. The anticipation and excitement was palpable. The streets were filled with thousands of people, young and old, from every background, all of them there, together, to catch a glimpse of their heroes. The citizens had arrived. In 1923, Manchester City moved to a new stadium at Main Road. It would prove to be a catalyst for future success. Regularly challenging for league and cup titles and playing in front of record crowds, loyal support from fans helped to propel the team to victory in the 1934 FA Cup. And three years later, in 1937, the club secured their first league championship win. The Second World War and its immediate aftermath were testing times for Mancunians. Manchester City welcomed former German paratrooper and prisoner of war Bert Troutman to the club. Bert became a major hero in post-war Manchester, demonstrating a desire to build bridges. It's the cup final, the greatest match of them all. Manchester kick off. Troutman's down, he's injured, but the crowd can see his neck is turning badly. Troutman's game as ever, injured or not, he's determined to pull his weight. But over the next 10 years, Manchester City struggled on the pitch. With the arrival of Joe Mercer in July 1965, Manchester City would embark on a period of unprecedented success. In 1968, the club were crowned league champions again and followed this with two further domestic trophies in the FA Cup and League Cup. During this time, under the management of Joe Mercer and assistant Malcolm Allison, the club also secured its first European trophy, the Cup Winners' Cup. Manchester City continued to compete in league and cup competitions throughout the 1970s, but as the club moved into the next decade, it fell on harder times, suffering a shock relegation in 1983. Support from the club's fans didn't waver. They continued to be as passionate as they had always been. Young local players were developed within the club's youth system. City and the community, the club's foundation, was launched. And shortly after this, a new women's team was established. All of this, and a yellow and banana craze that swept through the stadium, demonstrated the unwavering spirit of the club and its fans. Manchester City find themselves facing the worst day in their history. Towards the end of the 90s, the club reached its lowest point. Manchester City are going down. This club, just like this city, is built on resilience. 
the disappointment would come regeneration and desire. In 2002, people came to Manchester from across the world for the Commonwealth Games. A chance for the city to shine and rediscover the pulse that made it great. The city was changing. New developments, new industries were fueling regeneration. Manchester was back, and it was quite a show. After 80 years, it was time to say farewell to Main Road and move to a new home that would go on to become known as the Etihad Stadium. A moment to reflect on a lifetime in football. The seeds of change had been planted, and in 2008, new investment came to the club. Abu Dhabi United Group saw in us a partner. After 44 years, we witnessed a moment in history, the likes of which we may never see again. And following their relaunch in 2014, success for our women's team quickly followed with victory in the FA WSL Continental Cup. The path we had travelled, our heart and soul. Together we build for the future, for the players, for the fans and for the community. souvenir guidebooks, they're a very recap of the tour you've just been on basically. Yeah, so lots of more information as well. Don't, don't so feel free to get hold of one of those if you wish. From the same desk, those of you that have had your picture taken in the Premier League.